Bill, do you have the heart and commitment to the game to make the call? Here, Bill, I'll give you my heart. Here, take take my heart. Make the call. Make the call. Please, take my heart, Bill. situation much better than I. Hello, everyone. I'm Jonathan Little for PokerCoaching.com. Here today with an interesting hand that took place about 15 years ago in a very high-stakes sit-and-go. I know they don't do a whole lot of those anymore, but this used to be something they played on TV a long time ago. If you came into poker at some point over the last 15 years, do me a favor, click the like and subscribe button below, also the notification bell. I want to make sure you stay up to date on not just new cutting edge material, but also some of the old retro stuff. This video is from the Party Poker YouTube channel. Make sure you check them out at youtube.com slash partypokerlive. It is fun and interesting to go back and watch some of these iconic old hands. And this one is incredibly educational. This hand features Phil Helmuth. You see him here representing a now defunct poker site. You all may know him. He's named the Poker Brat. He has over $24 million in live tournament earnings, including 15 World Series of Poker bracelets. That's the most of anyone. And his opponent in this hand is Tony G. Tony G is best known for being the Rubik's Cube champion of Lithuania when he was a child. If you all know anything about Rubik's Cube champions, they love to do fun, creative, interesting things, and that is exactly what Tony G is going to do in this hand. So, let's set the scene. In this hand, Tony G raises the button to 4,000. Bill Helmuth, three bets from the small blind with King Jack offsuit to 16,000 out of his 91,000 effective stack, which is about 40 big blinds, perfectly fine play. And it gets back around to Tony G and he is going to call. Now, like I said, Rubik's Cube champions don't come to the poker table to fold. They want to play, right? They're used to playing Rubik's Cube. When you're playing Rubik's Cube, you get to play with the Rubik's Cube the entire time, right? You don't fold the Rubik's Cube. And often the Rubik's Cube players don't like to fold at poker. So Tony G is going to play this hand, but I want to make sure you are not making overly loose, splashy calls because it will cost you money in the long run, especially with hands like King Six Suited, because when a relatively tight aggressive player like Phil Helmuth three bets you from the small blind, he's usually going to have a strong linear range like he does here, right? Turns out Tony G is super dominated. So I have some free downloadable charts for you to make sure that you do not make this Error. You can download them for free at pokercoaching.com slash six max charts. Go get them. Go download them. That's going to go a long way to ensuring you do not make the common mistake of playing too loosely before the flop. Let's take a look at this hand. Let's get to it. A little bit of a squeeze. You oh. probably would have been successful with it. Oh my God. <laughs> but who knows? Phil <laughs> might be oh in the mood. It didn't come here to fall. This time I think I have you. We'll see. Well, I mean right now. See, last time I didn't have. This is going to be bad for Tony. We'll see if Tony to can get away from this. Okay. So, Phil Helmuth, good read. King Jack actually is good against the Rubik's Cube champion. Phil Helmuth checks on this flop. Flop was King 9 7. You're going to have to forgive the um, old school graphics here. Remember, this was from 15 years ago. They didn't have RFID chips and cards so that everything was perfect. Um, now, Sometimes it's not entirely clear what's happening. So we'll have to, I, I've already watched the video. I know what's going to happen. We're going to make sure that we stay up to date on this. Flop comes king, nine, seven. As we see here, Phil checks. And then Tony G has to figure out what to do with this top pair bad kicker. So first things first, should Phil Helmuth check king jack on this flop? This is a scenario where both checking and betting are fine plays. You do want to have a checking range when you are out of position a large chunk of the time. And some of the best hands to check are hands like top pair, bad kicker, like Phil Helmuth has, right? And I realize the jack is not like a terrible kicker, but usually the jack kicker is not going to be all that great compared to Tony G's range because he's going to have a whole lot of hands like um, King Queen and, you know, he has King 10 that you beat, but also King 9, right? So you're not really expecting Tony G to have a whole lot of hands like King 6 suited. Um, also, perhaps most importantly, is that Phil Helmuth is aware that Tony G is the Rubik's Cube champion and that he enjoys bluffing. And if your opponent enjoys bluffing, that also allows your opponent to value bet a little bit thinly. So in this scenario, when Phil checks, he has a great hand that he can check the flop, check call, check the turn, check call, check the river, check call, inducing a lot of bluffs all along the way. If instead he bets the flop and bets the turn and bets the river, now he's really only going to get called by 
what, like a king or better, right? And against the reasonable kings and better, it turns out Philhamus King Jack is actually not in all that great of shape. So if you know your opponent likes bluffing, I love the check by Bill Helmuth here. Now, checks to Tony G. Kind of like I said a check is fine for Phil Helmuth. I think a check is fine for Tony G as well. If he bets in this scenario and gets raised, it's miserably bad. And if he gets called, it's also marginal, right? Now, remember, this hand was from 15 years ago. And 15 years ago, when a lot of people checked the flop, they would have exactly a hand worse than a king because they had a king, they would bet it. If they have a good draw, they'd bet it and they check everything else. If that's the case, then Tony G's king six is actually the nuts because that means, well, Phil's check means he has pocket queens or worse. But we see that's not what Phil Helmuth is doing. Phil Helmuth was ahead of the curve 15 years ago and he opts to check in this scenario. All right, so Tony G does in this scenario decide to go for a small bet. If you are gonna bet this king six, you have to go small. If you bet big, that's gonna result in Phil Helmuth folding out a lot of the hands you wanna get called by, like pocket eights or jack 10, right? Maybe not jack 10, maybe queen jack, how about that? Uh, these are all hands that you'd want to get called by, and if you bet big, those hands will start to fold. So he bets 9,000 into the 34,000 pot, which is at least a reasonable play. I'm glad he didn't bet big. <laughs> Good bet, Tony. <laughs> Bill calls. That's called an Did you ask call. Bill does not want to check raise, by the way, because if Phil check raises, then again, he lets Tony G off the hook with all of his bluffs. Remember, if they play Rubik's Cube, you want to keep them in the pot. I think you mean you want to I see how much out. money Tony can lose this hand <laughs> rather than if he can get away from it. <laughs> you said that, <laughs> not me. Well, so well, Phil does this so interesting much, thing yeah. where he opts to check he in the dark. Tony did. And I don't think I've ever checked in the dark in my life. That said, if you are in a scenario where you know you literally have no turn betting range, then checking in the dark doesn't actually give away any information. So anyway, Phil checks the flop, or checks the turn, and now it's up to Tony G. And on this two turn, the way from ground, ground to job. there they go. Um, on this two of clubs turn, I think Tony G now has a mandatory check. While Tony G's hand was perhaps good enough to get value on the flop, on the turn, if he bets again and gets called, he's going to be against a range of exactly good kings and better, which he loses to, and premium draws like ace of clubs with another card or something like pocket queens with a queen of clubs. And against that range, you're actually not in that great of shape. Yeah, you're slightly ahead, but you're not in that great of shape. Also, every once in a while, you're going to get check raised all in, and that is a miserably bad spot, especially if you think your opponent is on the generally tight, aggressive side, like Phil Helmuth is, and you probably have to fold your king six, and you're not really looking to fold top pair bad kicker. Top pair bad kicker is a very strong marginal made hand. I actually discuss thoroughly how to play spots like this at my training site, pokercoaching.com. We have hundreds of classes covering the common spots. And this is one that comes up a lot when you have a strong but non-nut hand. And the way to play these scenarios most of the time is to just check. Yes, sometimes you're gonna get outdrawn. Sometimes it's just not gonna work out great and you end up missing out on a little bit of value. But in exchange for missing out on a little bit of value sometimes or getting outdrawn sometimes, you don't go broke when you happen to be against a better hand like Tony G is in this scenario. So make sure you check out pokercoaching.com and the classes there. All of the common spots are covered to make sure you do not mess up situations that come up on a regular basis. So in this scenario, pot is 52,000. Tony G pretty quickly bets 20,000. I do not like this bet. And like I said, Phil Hum is just in check call down mode, right? He really has no other option. If he raises at this point again, Tony G is always going to call with flushes. He's going to fold out a lot of the hands that are drawing thin to dead. So I love the call by Phil Helmuth. Whoa. Tony doesn't like to lay I down, call. and Tony will continue to bluff until his head is bloodied <laughs> against the wall. So commentator says here that Tony G is going to continue bluffing until his head is bloody against the wall. I want to make it really clear here. Tony G does not think he is bluffing. Tony G has top pair. Tony G thinks that whenever Phil Helmuth checks the flop, or when most people in general check the flop, they have a hand worse than top pair. Therefore, king six is probably good. Phil would also bet his flush draws on the flop, therefore he probably doesn't have a flush. So Tony G is value betting here. Remember, this hand's from 15 years ago. A lot of the commentary from back then is a little bit off. So I'm going to pick apart the commentary here a little bit going forward because a lot of the stuff that is just said in it is just not accurate. But in this scenario, Tony G is not bluffing. Remember, Tony G does not know what Phil Helmuth has, right? They're not watching here with the cards face up. It's very important to not be results-oriented. And in this scenario, 
Like, yeah, if you know Phil Helmuth has King Jack, you don't bet. But we don't know what Phil Helmuth has. It turns out poker's super easy if you know your opponent's cards. And one of the most important skills that you must master if you want to get anywhere near decent at poker is to learn to not be results-oriented. And, you know, Tony was, I think, trying to represent Check the flush it. here. Okay. Commentator says Tony G is trying to represent a flush. I completely disagree. Tony G was betting his top pair for value and protection because he thinks it's the best hand. Because, like I said, when Phil checks the flop, he thinks he has a whole lot of hands worse than a king. Therefore, the king is good. He's not representing a flush. You have to realize that whenever you are, in any scenario, you are not representing a specific hand. You're representing a range of hands. And in this situation... When Phil checks a turn and Tony G bets, Tony G is representing a range of perhaps king, queen, and better made hands, because those are hands that can easily value bet and get called by worse. And he's representing some bluffs, right? The bluffs would be hands with a club, like maybe random ace of clubs X, queen of clubs jack, queen of clubs 10, jack of clubs 10, stuff like that, right? These are all hands that Tony G would love to bet the turn with. So he's not representing specifically a flush. This is an old school thought process that just is not right. You're always representing a range of hands. And hopefully he's not going to take another bet here. Oh. Tony, no, don't. Oh, what, are you, what are you doing? So on the river, rivers are two of spades. Phil Hummuth checks. Tony G decides to go all in for two thirds pot. 62,000 into the 92,000 chip stack. Again, I'm not in love with this bet. The only way you can justify Tony G's turn plus river bet is if you have such a spot on read on Phil Helmuth, 15-time World Series Poker Bracelet winner, that you know he has a hand worse than a king. If he has a hand worse than a king, I actually love Tony G's bet. Why? Because even if he doesn't call your all-in all that often, let's say Phil Helmuth folds out pocket queens the majority of the time, or folds out ace-nine suited the majority of the time, every once in a while he's going to hear a call and you're going to print some money. And you may say, but yeah, sometimes he has you beat. But, but no, he actually doesn't, right? If he only checks the flop, with worse than a king, then he doesn't have you beat. You just have the best hand every time. So if that's the case, I love Tony G's bet. Good, solid value bet. But, and this is a big but, the problem is that assessment is wrong. We see Phil Helmuth very clearly sitting here top pair, good kicker, right? And if that's the case, then Tony G has a hand that he wants to play for one or two bets. Betting the flop's fine, but once you bet the turn and get called, you have to check this river because now... Phil Helmuth could easily be sitting here with a king that's just not going to fold, and you are going to lose. So, for the most part, I think this is an easy check, unless he knows that Phil Helmuth is an extreme calling station, and his range is almost entirely weaker hands. Whenever you are value betting on the river like Tony G is doing, you need to make sure that you are getting called by hands worse than your hand, king six in this scenario, more than 50% of the time. And in a tournament scenario, I'm not sure of the payout implications here, but in a tournament scenario, often you need to be good even a little bit more, like 52 to 55% of the time, because there's value in not going broke. And the chips you lose are usually worth more than the chips you win. So this is a spot where that could be true or could not be true, right? If, like I said, if Phil Hummus range is all hands worse than a queen, or worse than a king, then this king is just a super nuts and you can value bet it. But if it contains a lot of kings that just never fold, and hands like pocket queens or ace nine that will fold sometimes, then the bet becomes way more suspicious. Um, I have classes on that as well at PokerCoaching.com discussing when to value bet the river and when to not value bet the river. And this is a situation where, like this king six could be a really easy value bet in some scenarios or a really bad value bet in other scenarios. And it's important you understand how to analyze these spots because if you just think blindly, top pair bad kicker, always check, or top pair always value bet, you're going to be making big, big errors across the board. So make sure you study these spots that come up very, very frequently. Let's see if you've got the heart and commitment to this game. Woo! <laughs> Let's see if you have the heart oh, Tony G. and commitment. Oh, Tony G. If Phil falls here, would he be so free? Does Phil have it? What do you think? Do you think Phil has the heart? To be honest, I think I might get it. This could be a record. Yeah. What do you think Phil Helm is going to do in this scenario? I'm not asking what you would do, because... I know that everyone here in the YouTube comments can see that Phil, Phil Hammoth has the best hand and he should make an easy call. Don't be results oriented. What do you think Phil Hammoth's going to do here? Do you think Phil is going to have the heart and commitment to this game to make the call with the bluff catcher? In the comment section below, write what you think Phil Hammoth's going to do. Do you think he's going to fold or do you think he's going to call? Go ahead. I'll wait a second for you.
Worst ever this is Tony's ever problem. Been. He has a hand that he can win with. There's no reason not to <laughs> Might have had a here. busted flush. Goal. None. So here, commentator again saying that, you know, no reason for Tony to bet this hand. But again, I disagree. He thinks he has the nuts. Um, and you see Tony G's mannerisms here make me think that he thinks he's value betting. So do you think Phil has the heart and commitment? Abysmal. There is not a, he's not going to get <laughs> Phil to call with a worse hand. Maybe not true. He can only get called by a better hand. It's, it doesn't seem like true it makes lucky. sense as a bet. I, I he's know. the Rubik's Cube champion, don't forget. Remember, this is something else a lot of people do incorrectly in my mind, is that they think that just because they would not call with a worse hand than King-6 here, that therefore everybody doesn't call with a worse hand than King-6. But I'm telling you, if you slotted me into Phil Hummus shoes here and you gave me pocket queens with the Queen of Clubs or Ace-9 or uh, like a hand like pocket eights even, I would be pretty inclined to hero call in this spot because I know I'm playing against a Rubik's Cube champion who loves to bluff. If they love to bluff, you have to call. By the way, Phil Hummus has an easy call here in my mind. He has done everything in his ability to induce a bluff by checking flop, checking turn, checking river. Also, he has the king of clubs, which is quite valuable because you make it more difficult for Tony G to have ace king of clubs, king queen of clubs, king jack of clubs, king ten of clubs, king six of clubs, right? He can't have any of those. So you're blocking some of the flushes. And Tony G may actually be value betting slightly thin like this because he thinks that you have a hand worse than a king. So pretty much no matter how he slices it, this king jack's an easy call. But... Bill, do you have the heart and commitment to the game to make the call? Here, Bill, I'll give you my heart. Here, take take my heart. Make the call. Make the call. Please, take my heart, Bill. situation much better than I. I have the feeling he's just betting this for fun. I mean, I think this is because this is fun. This is Phil calls here. He thinks if he's got the best hand, and Phil calls, he goes. Don't make a good call. The other commentator put it together. Tony G does think he has this. I'm pretty sure. It's crazy, but no. I'm pretty sure. Tony thinks he's winning. He's supposed to check. Commentator says here again, if Tony G thinks he's winning, then he's supposed to check. But again, that's sort of like very close-minded thought process of top pair bad kicker, marginal made hand, check it back every time. But there, there certainly are times to bet. And the interesting thing is here, I don't even know if this bet is actually bad by Tony G because perhaps he's played a lot with Phil Helmuth. I know he has. And if he thinks Phil Helmuth just check calls down with all under pairs, this is actually a really good value bet that a lot of people would have missed. Though, that's oh, the problem. It's obviously wrong this time, so though. <laughs> Don't be results-oriented. So he thinks he's bluffing. He knows he's bluffing. Yeah, he has to know he's bluffing, because if he thinks he's winning, he has to check. I don't mind. He does not think he is bluffing. Tony G, in no world, thinks he's bluffing. God dang. What the heck could he have? You know, Phil, this entire Premier League, he's been damned if he does. And damned if he does. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't like the Deuce of Clubs is what I didn't like. I'm, I'm rooting so hard. Does he have the heart? Call here just so that Was your prediction right? Off this pot by Tony, after the rough Premier League he'd had, I'd like him to make the hero call here. I really am rooting for him to do right. this right. There we go. Did you see the way Tony G just turned up his cards? Gotcha, buddy. That is the look of a guy who thinks he has the best hand. Deliver the bad news, Phil. That can be good. Wrap the table. Nice hand. Phil Helmuth. scoop -a loops A solid pot. That's going to be it for today. Hope you enjoyed this hand. If you did, do me a favor. Click the like and subscribe button below. I appreciate all of you being here. I really do. If you were not here, I would not be doing this work, making these videos for you. I enjoy making these videos, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to show up here and make content for you. If you want to make sure you stay up to date on all the content I am putting out, Make sure you click the notification bell below. That's going to ensure that you do not miss any of the stuff I put out. Good luck in your games. Have a great, great week. I'll talk to you next time. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want more strategy lessons, pre-flop charts, and interactive quizzes, make sure you get your free membership to PokerCoaching.com right now at PokerCoaching.com free. I'll talk to you next time.